This episode contains material that includes graphic descriptions and content that may be disturbing or offensive to some listeners. Please be aware that the following content may include violence, blood, or other explicit material. It's not suitable for children or individuals who are sensitive to such content. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Hello? Hey there, is this Laura? Hey, what's going on? I was waiting on the call. How you doing? I am good. How are you? Doing awesome. So we ready to get this started? Yeah, tell me what's been going on. This whole happened when, while me and my son were in a homeless shelter in Lenore, North Carolina, I cannot disclose the name of the homeless shelter nor the director due to privacy concerns. I was getting ready to lay my son down to bed for the night. He had happened to give me a late night stinky present before this all happened. One of the rules were that we couldn't toss away stinky diapers in the shelter that would stink up the lobby in the entire shelter. So I had went, tossed out the diaper. I've been hearing stories from the director that the other ladies, the other residents in the shelter had seen this same Sasquatch in the area. Now... As I had went out, I, I was off of the porch in less than a minute. The moment I stood off the porch, I heard in the background, so I don't know if it was maybe a beagle or a hound, but it was barking and it sounded like it was very distressed, very stressed out. Something just gave me the feeling something's back there. He, he's back there. He is back there somewhere. It just felt like something was watching me the entire time I was walking towards the dumpster. I just kept my eyes back behind the building. I just kept hearing myself say, there's something back there. He's back there. I know he's back there. There's something back there. I only got as far the driveway to the back of the building towards the dumpster. And I saw a tall, muscular, hairy figure moving behind the fence. Just as I stopped, he roared at me. And this sounded like a very aggressive lion type roar. Like you could hear it all throughout the air like it was very aggressive it was just like go away i don't want you here in less than a minute i had ran back onto the porch back inside screaming fuck this fuck this fuck this fuck this fuck this i had went back inside and literally yelled i am not going back out there my roommate had walked out she heard me yelling and she was like what the hell is going on here i said he is back there i saw him he is back there behind the fence he just roared at me and she saw the terror and she saw how wide my eyes were she saw how kill i was just how terrified i was i was like i don't want to go back out there ever again and ever since then I have refused to be out after dark because I don't want to have some sort of encounter like that ever again. I can't say that I blame you. You said other people had experienced this. What were other people experiencing? Were they seeing things? Were they hearing things? I do know now the shelter I was in was for, is also for children. Apparently, some of the other ladies have saw this creature coming up to their windows, trying to take their window screens off. One of them, children there, had actually seen this creature peeking into the building. Was Bigfoot something that was on your radar before you had this experience? Did you believe in it? Was it something that you had heard about in the past? My brother, he's a big believer in creatures like the Bigfoot. I don't know if you ever heard of the Cherokee Death Cat. He's a huge believer in it. As a matter of fact, he watched the show called Mountain Monsters on Discovery+. Plus. The moment after everything happened, I ended up calling my brother up and I told him, you know, what happened as well as the experiences that the children and the women there have also experienced. He asked me some questions and everything and he believes it may be the wild man, the Kentucky or the Virginia wild man because this creature didn't like us going near the... The dumpster, apparently it claims the dumpster as its territory. I was told by her that the children has actually seen this creature firsthand. I believe they said it was, I don't know if it was walking on all fours, it was walking on two legs, but it was extremely tall and it was, it stopped in place and actually turned around and looked at them. The moment it did that, she said that they had screamed and took off running back towards the building. I can't say that I blame them. You really can't. Who in the world would want to be face-to-face or even 
spy a creature that is so much taller than them and more than likely not only has the strength to literally tear apart even a semi or a honda odyssey end up even killing them just in one go yeah i've definitely heard those kind of stories in the past I have also watched Mountain Monsters. There's several episodes of Mountain Monsters I have watched, and I have seen all these episodes just the kind of strain that these creatures can have. It's something that you do not need to intervene with. Let me ask you this. This is something that always comes up. People want to know as much as they can about the area around where you saw this creature. I've interviewed a ton of people, and people used to think you had to be 10 miles deep into the woods to have an experience with these creatures. What kind of area is surrounding? Are there woods around this area where this shelter is? How do you think this thing is moving around, avoiding detection from other people? I believe it's using... Now, we're, the shelter is completely surrounded by woods. There's not many houses or anything. There's only one road that goes in and out of there. It's mainly surrounded by complete woods, complete forest. The way I see it, it tries to use the shadows, especially in the nighttime, to try and avoid detection. Now, the experiences with the children, apparently it happened during the daytime. I don't know why, but apparently it just seemed, didn't bother to want even to avoid the detection from the children. But the other experiences that I was told about, apparently they all happened at night while they were inside the building. Let me ask you this. There's no way of knowing because I don't think anybody really knows what these things are, but have you had the opportunity to give some thought to what you think these creatures are? Do you think there's some sort of flesh and blood relic hominoid? Do you think there's something demonic? What do you think these creatures might be? Now, I don't really see, then again, there are certain creatures that I see, especially since I'm Cherokee. I believe there are some Native American legends that has a lot to do with demonic entities. Now, Bigfoot, I don't really see them as demonic. God works in mysterious ways. He can create any creature he wants and make them look like he wants and have as much strength as he wants them to. So I don't really don't see Bigfoots as demonic. Now, if there's things like, I believe you heard of the dark forest. I believe it was in either Virginia or West Virginia. Now, I have reason to believe not all of that is completely demonic because what happened with the guys there, it was just something that demons have the absolute power to do, especially when it came to to the possession. Now, that all that's demonic, but Bigfoots, I don't see them as demonic, but creatures that want to live similar to us, like they're able to have families and they want to provide their food and stuff to their families, even though they're nothing like us. They don't have to work to make money and pay bills and everything, but they do hunt around to try to get food to feed their families, especially their young and whatnot. So they're very similar to us. If you had the opportunity, obviously you have the opportunity now to tell people what you want them to understand about Bigfoot, because there's people that are going to listen to this that don't think they exist. There's plenty of people that listen to this that think they do exist. What do you want people to take away from your experience, these creatures in general, if you have the opportunity to tell folks what they should know or what you want them to take away from your experience about Bigfoot? Now for the Bigfoot, it's for the believers and non-believers. Most importantly, Try to respect them, especially their territory, because a lot of them are in the area, not just because of food resources, but because they may have a family there. They might have, say, the human form of a wife and children. Respect them and respect their territory because these creatures, I know for a fact, like I said before, they have to strength to kill you in just one swoop and can probably even destroy a vehicle as big as my Honda Odyssey or as big as a semi-truck, respect them, respect their territory, because all they want to do is raise their young and provide food for their young. Respect them and their territory. I definitely think those are wise words. Is there anything else that we didn't cover or that you want to tell people about your experience? All I can say is it was a very terrifying experience. Like, I never expected to be warned at like that. I never meant this creature any harm. I don't mean anyone any harm. I'm very calm. I'm very relaxed and outgoing person. I'm very kind. I was just terrified that after this thing roared at me that he would try to, you know, just step over the fence and come after me. I said, I literally was back on the porch and back in that building in less than a minute because I have a little boy, a little disabled one-year-old that I take care of and he needs me. And so the last thing I needed to happen is for the shelter residents to come out in the morning and see this literally blood splatter all over the road from him attacking me. 
Yeah, I'm definitely glad that didn't happen. Laura, I appreciate you sharing your story. It's going to help a lot of people that hear this that have similar experiences that have never shared it with people. You telling your story will hopefully give people the opportunity to understand that other people have had very similar experiences and maybe they'll come forward and share their story as well. I hope this teaches them and shows them, hey, maybe we should respect these creatures and respect the families that they might possibly have in the area. Because that's one of the main reasons why, especially when it comes to these male creatures, the reason why the shell territorials can be so aggressive is because, hey, you never know. Maybe they might be protecting a family and protecting their territory from other male Bigfoot. I mean, you never know until you figure out the truth. Don't ever judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Very wise words. I appreciate you taking the time to share your story with me and everybody that's going to listen to this. I thank you very much. Not a problem. You have a good day, sir. God bless. You take care. You too. Bye-bye.